Hey everybody, tonight I uh, thought we would go over multiple sets of injectors with Holly EFI. So I see a lot of people switching to methanol lately, and um, some people are doing one big set, some people are doing two smaller sets, some people are doing what I do. So I figured I would show you how to set them up and make them work. So um, if we go into Holly EFI V6, this is build 220, um, this is your base fuel table. So if you don't know how to get here, is this. If you don't know how to get here, um, you probably don't need to be worrying about setting up two sets of injectors also. So um, this is in volumetric efficiency. This is a whole different video that we don't need to go into right now. But, um, and this isn't accurate. This is intentionally wrong so that people didn't try to take my numbers out of here and shove them in a car, in a car and just make it run. But anyway, so um, you have multiple sets of injectors. So if we go into the system ICF, um, and we go to fuel system injection type custom, and then I selected three sets of injectors. This is on my own car. Um, this is, uh, I have three sets of injectors. Uh, this is a big block Chevrolet. So I'll show you how we did this, right? So we go to configure injector sets. So there's a couple things in here that you need to pay attention to. So set one is, um, is wired to, um, the standard engine harness right so that's it's on the standard engine harness um you know off of a j1b so set one is always going to be those injectors so for my application there's eight of them they're 80 pound per hour semen decas um they're under the intake and this is what i use for uh pump gas so this is a methanol tune that i'm working with right now and if there's enough interest in this um i'll go into how to convert from gasoline to methanol like on the fly but it's a rather lengthy process so i didn't really want to cover that in this so anyway this is set one um the second set of injectors is right here they're 220 pound per hour semen deck injectors from holly um and notice that the rated injector pressure and actual injector pressure is or actual system pressure is a little different right so they're rated at 43 psi but i run them at 50 psi um Keep in mind, we have a minimum open time of one millisecond here. So we'll, we're going to touch on that here shortly. So if I wanted, this is an injector that I use for methanol, right? So the set one right here is not being used for methanol at all. This is on a completely separate fuel system and it's for pump gas. If you haven't seen uh, my convertible and how I set up the fuel system, I made another video on that. Go check it out. Um, but, uh, but we're going to be talking about set two and set three. So set two... Siemen Deca 220s or Holly 220s. Um, they're they're pretty much impossible to get your hands on now, um, probably because I've bought them all. Uh, but uh, they are a fantastic injector. It's just they're not very um, readily available. So we here we can select if we wanted to use it for prime shot, cranking fuel, or individual cylinder corrections. In this scenario, I don't want to use it for any of that. Okay, so. Um, what we're going to do is we, we have all that information set up. We're going to set three. Okay. These are the big boys. These are AFIS 600 pound per hour injectors. So this is the correct injector off time information for these injectors. Um, I just have it selected as build atomizer 700. It doesn't really matter because I wound up changing all this stuff anyway. Um, we could have just made this custom and changed that. If you don't know what an AFIS injector is, it's these. So these are 600 pound per hour injectors at 43 PSI. Um, fantastic. I love these injectors. I run them on quite a few cars now. We've installed them in a bunch. So uh, this is also shamelessly plugging my own website. This is hcrinnovations.com slash shop slash AFIS, yada, yada, yada. So if you're interested in buying these, um, check them out on my website. There's some information, you know, all the information about them here. Uh, you do have to use an injector driver module, but if you are doing three sets of injectors, you need an injector driver module anyway. So, or two sets of injectors. So, um, so anyway, what the common scenario is, is that people will run two sets of a Bosch 10, Bosch 210 pound per hour injector, right? So you would have, you know, set one and two as Bosch 210. Most people don't run three sets of injectors, but, um, but this is what I got. So this is what we're working with. So once you have your injector information um, keyed in correctly, um, keep keep in mind of this minimum open time, um, 1.8 milliseconds for an AFIS 600. Do they idle? 
Yes, I have no problem idling these on small blocks, on big blocks, on methanol. They are not going to idle gasoline. They are not going to idle E85. But on methanol, they will idle. It'll be a little bit rich, but um, that's kind of the name of the game when you get into these big injectors. The other thing is, is that if you're interested in a set of these injectors um, and you need information, give us a call because uh, a lot of people are used to oversizing their fuel systems because of the other injectors that are out on the market that don't actually move the volume of fuel that they're supposed to. So everybody's kind of got into this, uh, you need at least 800 pound per hour injectors for everything, which is not the case. So I'll get that out of the way. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm using the 600 pound per hour injectors for the prime shot, for cranking fuel and for individual cylinder corrections. Um, so we've got all of our injector information in here. Now we need to tell the ECU when we want what injector to do what. So click on Fuel ICF. This is your volumetric efficiency table. If you tune in VE, then you understand this. If you don't, you are used to seeing this. This is um, this is pounds per hour, right? So I tune in both of them. Um, VE, pounds per hour. In my classes, I teach VE. Um, and then I also touch on pounds per hour and, under, and understanding pounds per hour. But that's a totally different video. What we have to do here is we need to tell when the second and first or second and third set of injectors are going to come on and what they're going to do. So if you go up here and click on custom injectors, okay, so it brings you up to this, right? So this is your custom injector fuel table percentage. So right now it's in percentage, right? Base percentage. Change it to fuel flow, it'll change it to pounds per hour. If we change it to duty cycle, it changes it to, uh, to percentage of duty cycle, okay? So right now set one, remember I said um, set one is my... Uh, 80 pound per hour pump gas injector. So this is the methanol tune-up for the car. Um, I'm also going to say that I am pro two different tune-ups, okay? Uh, not because you can't get it to transition smoothly from pump gas to methanol, but because if you run the car on pump gas, the injector or the uh, spark plug is going to wind up looking like crap. And um, I'd rather not roll the dice when I'm pumping a couple thousand pounds per hour of methanol into the motor. So, for this instance, we're on set two and set three. So what this does is set two, if you remember, here, we'll do this, make the split screen here, uh, configure injector sets, set two, remember set two right here, set two is uh, set two right here. It's 220 pound per hour Holly uh, injectors, okay? So um, for set two or our Holly 220s, they're going to be doing all the work here, okay? So in the idle area, they're going to be doing all the work. And then we're transitioning over to the big boys up here, okay? So we're going to transition over, if we look at set three, it's the inverse of what we just saw in set two, okay? So um, <clears throat> set three is the 600 pound per hour injectors. Click here, right there. There you go, 600 pound per hour. So... By the time we hit these cells, the second set of injectors are off completely, and the third set of injectors are taking over. So if you notice, I like to roll them in and roll them in rather linearly, and these numbers aren't just like, you know, fill row values. It actually works out that way, but I mean, it, it, you'll see why when we look at the data log. So what we're doing is we're telling it, we're telling the computer, hey, when we're idling, I want to idle on the 220 pound per hour injectors, right? We can idle it leaner, cleaner, the whole nine yards. Um, and then as we start getting in the throttle, making a little bit of boost, we want to roll over to the big injectors, okay? So there's two reasons for that. One, you can lower the fuel flow so low that you get to this right here, this minimum open time, this minimum injector open time, so minimum pulse width, right? Once you reach minimum pulse width on an injector, um, they will either start shutting off at random because they just won't open that fast, or um, when you make fueling changes, it won't do anything for you. It'll just stay rich, right? So if it sits on minimum injector open time, it's a bad thing. So if you notice, set two flows a lot less fuel per injector, right? So we obviously have to run that open time longer. We have to open that injector longer to be able to supply enough fuel for it. But it's also got a lower minimum open time. So Keep that in mind when you start sizing injectors and when you start playing with this. This is one of the reasons why I heavily push people going to two sets of injectors because um, it seems as if 
over the, the past couple of years, everybody's been transitioning over to, uh, to methanol fuels and um, needing these big injectors. And then they wind up buying a set of, um, you know, 550, 550 pound per hour or 750 pound per hour injectors. And then you see them online complaining about, hey, my car idles like crap. It's like, well, yeah, you have a 330 cubic inch engine with a 700 pound per hour injector. It's going to happen. It's going to idle like crap. You also don't need a 700 pound per hour injector. Nine chances out of ten. So, um, so now that we've told the computer what we want it to do, the notice that the VE table doesn't change at all, right? So VE doesn't move around or shift or change. Um, it is, uh, it's just, well, all it's doing is it's deciding, all we're doing is deciding, telling the computer, this is the injector we want to work here. Then we want that injector to do 50% of the work, then 25% of the work, and then we want it to shut off, right? So if you look at fuel flow, um, looks rather erratic because we start getting into percentages, you know what I mean? So it's kind of difficult to tune by fuel flow, right, on this. Um, and then if we look at set three, uh, we, we notice that we've got zero, but notice our, our minimum number is 24 and we're D cell there anyway. So, um, so the smallest amount of fuel that we're ever going to flow is 24 pounds per hour. If we look at set two, you know, we're, we're idling, um, you know, we're idling, you know, we can come all the way down to 12 pounds per hour. Not that we, we need to or nothing, but you know, it's there. So, uh, if we look at injector duty cycle, same thing, set two is up over 1% in the idle area, right? Uh, set three, um, we start, we're a little bit, little bit towards the edge here, right around that 1%. That 1% is in, is the duty cycle, not the uh, milliseconds of open time. So I'm going to show you this in um, in use, right? So I just put the car on the uh, two-step today. So let's go ahead and open up a data log. So in the data log, we've I, I built a little view here so it could just kind of show you what we're doing here, right? So um, let's just zoom in here. So if you want to zoom in, you left click, hold, and drag. So there we are. We just start. We just get you know, we're 1181 RPM and we just reached that 25% TPS threshold, which is uh, where I start the data log, right? So if you notice, um, the fuel table two, right? So fuel table two is injector set to, right? Is at a hundred percent. So we want, let's just watch that number as I scroll over. So it's starting, see, it's starting to taper off, right? So now we're at 20 ish percent. But we have 79% coming from fuel table three, which is your 600 pound per hour injectors. So this is the next number to look at. Now notice I've got injector pulse width for injector one, nine, and 17. So injector one is that gasoline injector that we're using on cylinder one. Injector nine is that 220 pound per hour injector we're using on cylinder one. And injector 17 is that 600 pound per hour injector that we're using on cylinder one. So these are the three, three injectors that are on cylinder one. Okay. So let's get rid of that and let's get rid of this and let's look at this, right? So um, notice you can see that the trend here, right? So the blue line is the 220s. They were, they were doing their job and then they start to taper off and come down, right? And the green line is the 600s, and they were doing nothing, hanging out, and then they said, oh, hey, we got to wake up and do something, right? So um, let's look at that pulse width, okay? So 1.8 milliseconds is the minimum pulse width for this injector right here, injector number 17, okay? So this actually needs a, probably you could use a little bit more tweaking. And the only reason that we didn't have any type of a hiccup um, is because the majority of the fuel flow was already coming out of the 220 pound per hour injector. But right here at that spot, we're up over that minimum injector pulse width, right? Which means we're, it's flowing at 19.4 pounds per hour. So we need to we need to think about that, right? We're probably going to need to go back into this table and modify it a little bit so that we wait to turn on um, that injector a little bit further. So notice wherever I click is going to show up right here, this little dot, right? So if we come over here to base percentage, this area here, everything below this should probably be still be zero for that injector, okay? Because we were down below that minimum pulse width. So I'll show you on split screen. 
let's do this first. There we go. So there we are on split screen. Um, this, that, there we go. So if I click back here, notice that we're in that, that injector 17 pulse width, 1.08, right? So this whole area here, as we're coming up, you see the little yellow dot moving. Um, as we're coming up in RPM, right? The engine's moving up in RPM. We finally reach that spot where we're at about a 1.8 milliseconds of pulse width. That's where the injector starts to be happy, right? That's where the injector actually starts to function properly, okay? So at that point um, is where we need to start turning that injector on, okay? So we could do it a couple different ways. We could either increase this value sooner, right? So we could change that from 25 to 50% or something and, uh, and and try it again and see if we can bring that up. But there's a good chance if we move it to 50% that this pulse was only going to go up to about 1.1, 1.2, right? So um, we either have to jam these things on, go 0 to 100, but I'm just here to warn you and tell you that that never works out smoothly. It uh, doesn't matter whose injectors you're using. It just does not work out smoothly. Um, but this scenario works out rather well, but it just needs a little bit of tweaking, right? So uh, once we get up here, we're up on the we're up on the chip. We're popping and banging, you know, trying to make some boost. We only got 1.3 pounds in it uh, by one second. And, um, and we're starting to get to the point where we're tapering into flowing all of the fuel from those 600 pound power injectors so as we get out here right where it's where it's on the chip it's popping and banging night and you know this thing's about ready to let go um we're at 91 percent um of the fuel flow is coming from the 600 pound power injectors and uh nine percent of the fuel flow is coming from the 220s but notice the 220s still never dipped below that 1.0 pulse width right so um, it's a little bit of a balancing act, and it's a little bit easier when you're working with two sets of the same injector, but you, your goal here is to try to avoid getting it below that minimum pulse width of each injector. So um, the best way to go about this, in my opinion, and everything that I say here is in my opinion, I'm just trying to help everybody out and how to understand this, so just don't hold me to it saying like, well, this is what you're supposed to do, and you were wrong. I'm giving you advice. That's it. Um, so in my opinion, um, if you're going to use one set of injectors to go down the racetrack, uh, you should probably be on those injectors while it's on the chip. Okay. You should probably get it onto those injectors while it's on the chip and off of the second set. If you're just doing 50, 50 going down the racetrack, that's fine. doesn't matter. Just get them. You know, I like to get them evened up by the time you're on the chip, right? So whatever the scenario is going to be, whatever you leave at, um, this is, you, you should be, rolled over to either 100% if you're on one set of injectors or 50-50 if you're on two. So hopefully this answers some questions on tuning these things with multiple sets of injectors. And um, and uh, and if there's any interest in seeing how we do gasoline, I really don't want to because it's a bit of a pain and um, there's a lot more of this type of testing over and over and over again to get it right. But uh, I will do it if, uh, you know, if, the, if we feel as if the need's there. So anyway... Let me know what you think, um, and have a good one.